and welcome back to day eight of 10 Days of Prayer. Donald Owen and myself, we're here, glad that you're here, and we're here to remind you to pause to pray. Just because we're so close to the end, don't give up yet because we're, this is good stuff today. Looking at John chapter 2, we find Jesus performing his first miracle during a wedding where the wine has gone dry. His mother tells the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. By saying this, Mary actually built up an expectation in the servants toward Jesus. Then when he asked them to fill the water jars, they did exactly as he asked. And Jesus said, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. Once again, they followed his request and they soon realized they had just witnessed, in fact, assisted in a miracle. Though the servants did nothing to turn the water into wine and their involvement in the miracle may be just a minute part of the story, it's no secret that God uses willing people. It's imperative that you and I obey when the Holy Spirit invites us to pray or to minister to someone. Many of the miracles that are recorded in the Gospels involved human cooperation. The feeding of the 5,000 required someone to pass out the bread and collect the leftovers. The raising of Lazarus required someone to roll away the stone. Have you ever considered that when we pray for someone's need, we are assisting God in performing a miracle, an answer to prayer? In Mary's words, whatever he says to you, do it. They're so significant. It's like Mary was telling the servants, watch this. <laughs> the servants became insiders to the source of this special wine. When we pray for one another, faith tells us, watch this. And we become accomplices to God working in the world. When the answer comes, our faith is strengthened and we desire to intercede all the more. That's why it's so, so, so important to be obedient to the Holy Spirit's call to pray. When we pray or when we don't, we are literally letting God know whether or not we're willing to cooperate with Him. Oh God, give us obedient hearts to intercede, to be a part of your divine plan, oh God. I love the hymn that um, says, Perhaps today there are loving words which Jesus would have me speak. There may be now in the paths of sin some wanderer whom I should seek. O Savior, if thou will be my guide, though dark and rugged the way, my voice shall echo the message sweet. I'll say what you want me to say. You know it. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, or mountain, or plain, or sea. I'll say what you want me to say. what you want me to be. Donald, will you pray for us? Heavenly Father, who are we, Lord? <laughs> that was Isaiah, who am I? I'm a man of unclean lips. Moses said, I can't speak to these people. You said, who gave you those lips? Lord, you gave us those lips. You gave us the mind and the heart. Lord, I thank you that we, you can use broken, marred vessels. It says divinity needs humanity to reach humanity. And again, in 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 19, you call us to be ministers of reconciliation. In verse 20, to be ambassadors for Christ. That's what you've called us to be. Thank you, Lord, that we can be used by you to win some soul, some broken, hurting human being that they can one day, I don't know how it works, Lord, but maybe they'll come to us in heaven and say, it's because of you that I'm here. Lord, we just thank you that we have that opportunity and privilege. And it says, Lady Ellen White wrote once, by your fervent prayers of faith, you can move the arm that moves the world. We thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Exodus 15, 11. 
Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? God, how great you are. Thank you for being so wonderful and for using us to accomplish your will on earth. In 1 Chronicles 29, verse 11, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Mm. God, I am in awe of your greatness and in awe that you choose to use us just so you can show us how things work in your kingdom. I love that. God, you are so amazing and you involve us so that we can see your hand. So, Father, may we be willing and excited to be used of you. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you know, where would we be without Jesus? What an extraordinary gift. But you've called us to do in Matthew 28 and verse 19, to go you therefore into all the world and make disciples. That was a command that you have given us, as though when Tim was talking about this, turning this water into wine, it was a command. Lord, you command us to reach the souls around us. You know, Cain and Abel. <laughs> of course, we know like what Cain did, but he said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, Lord, we are our brother's keeper. We just ask that you'll anoint us, strengthen us, help us in these uncertain times to go out into the byways and the highways and call all who are ready to come to this feast or they may join us and that one day, Lord, we will be with you face to face and we'll hear those wonderful words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We thank you for this opportunity that lies ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, while there are some things that we can do to be a part of you moving in lives, mm. we know that when it comes to changing hearts, God, you, that's, that's up to you. Father, I pray for those who have turned their back on you, mm. who once knew you, who, I don't know, the circumstances why they turn away. God, I know I'm susceptible, I guess. I could mm. say that I am um, prone to wander. I've said it before on here in, in just the past few days. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because it's so true that I'm, I'm moody and sometimes I just don't want to follow you because I'm stubborn. Mm. God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would forgive me. Amen. And for those who are watching who are dealing with family members who are who have turned against you. Oh God, I ask that you would touch their hearts. Amen. Turn their hearts back to you, oh God. Holy Spirit, wherever they are in their in their running away from you, oh Lord, wrap your arms around them. Amen. Let them know that you love them and that you want them to come back to you. And I pray also for those who need deliverance. Lord, we've prayed so much for Amen. deliverance and, and um, alcohol, drugs. God, they're, they're just an evil that we can't seem to get away from. Lord, I pray that you would remind these people that you died, that they could be set free from this. You've given us the victory. Now we just need to claim that victory and we need to resist temptation. I know that it sounds, that sounds easier than, than it's actually done. Mm -hmm. So I ask God that you would be the strength. Holy Spirit, rise up within these addicts. Overcome our addictions. In Jesus' name. Your word, Heavenly Father, in 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess, there's cooperation. 
confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from not just a little or some, but cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, as Tim was praying for those in addictions, I'm thinking about what about those who do one thing, say one thing, act one thing, but their hearts are far from you, Lord. They really haven't surrendered everything to you. Outwardly, they appear great. As you said to the Pharisees, you're nothing but a bunch of whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. And we can't pretend to be walking with Christ if we don't really want you on the throne of our hearts. So I'm asking, Lord, we'll cooperate and, and confess as Tim had just openly confessed. I, too, agree. You know, there's times when I, I turn my back on you, Lord. I, I make decisions that are, I know the Holy Spirit's prompting me, don't go that way, but I still want to. And that's the fleshly part. So I ask, Lord, you take that fleshly nature away and help us to tro- totally be surrendered that we can be children of God. Hebrews 12 tells us that you just discipline those you love. And if you didn't, then we'd be illegitimate children and not sons and daughters of God. So, Lord, even though disciplining doesn't feel good, we need it. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I lift up pastors all around the world. And Lord, I pray that you would give them an encouragement. Mm-hmm. And Lord, I pray that they will see a, a, an amazing, miraculous way that you meet their needs. Many are struggling financially. There are churches that have been closed. Mm. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would lift up um, lift up the discouraged pastor. Encourage the discouraged members. Lord, we are a victorious church. Help Amen. us to act like it. Amen. And Father, I pray that you will... Um, provide for churches that need pastors. And Lord, send revival. Mm-hmm. Send workers. Send a harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to lift up world leaders. Not an easy thing they have to shoes they fill, but we have a heavenly king that we can live by your example. We ask, Lord, you'll touch these leaders and give them the wisdom to do their jobs mightily, but do it to glorify and honor you, not for themselves. There's things that are going on in dark corners right now, and we know, Lord, that your time is coming soon. But help those who have an ear to hear to to do the things that you're calling them to do and that they will stand up for your people. We thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you just to, um, as the old song says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust him when he says go, go. What he says do, you do it. And join us for one more day. Or for how many ever days?